Hey everyone, it's Mari. I'm so excited to be back again today with another project for the Vicki Booten design team. I'm going to be using this beautiful pattern paper from Storyteller. This is the paper that's called Patchwork and it just has this really gorgeous kind of tile pattern on the, the A side and on the B side, it's got just this beautiful navy blue with that text. And I just love this paper. I love both sides of it. And it was really the inspiration for my project today. So I'm going to be using that. And I'm also going to be using a piece of the foundations paper. Now that cardstock is just from my stash, that blue cardstock. I had pulled that just kind of for color inspiration. I wasn't sure if I was going to use any cardstock on the layout. So I actually don't end up using it but I just had it out on my desk here at the beginning of my process so this is my foundations paper here I'm just going to show you the area that I want to work on and I kind of want to create sort of like a diamond shaped pattern with that tile paper that patchwork paper just to create um, the details for my layout here today so I'm just going to going to get everything organized I've got a little piece of uh, plastic plastic sheeting. I've got my stencil brush in case I need that. I'm going to grab my Vicky Booten art crayons and I'm going to grab some paper towels, some baby wipes, some water, some paint brushes, all the things that I think I might use for my process today. Get those all ready to go and then I'll be ready to go ahead and start with my process today. So uh, I also wanted to use the uh, matte acrylic gel medium today as well. And so you're going to see me pulling that out. I'm going to use that through one of the stencils from Storyteller. And there you can just see I've, I'm getting my baby wipe and my paper towel. I have to have baby wipes and paper towel on my desk when I'm working with mixed media just because I get pretty messy. And it's nice to have that nearby so that if you do end up needing to um, sop up some extra uh, moisture and that sort of thing you've got that ready to go now I have two of the blue art crayons one's really that more brilliant blue and then kind of a teal and then I also put some black out there as well so that I could um, change the the darkness of the color a little bit and you'll see me doing that here during my process so I've got my Vicky Booten palette knife here I'm going to run some acrylic matte gel medium here through that stencil I'm just gonna scoop some of that out with my palette knife and this like I said before this is one of the storyteller stencils here and I just love this stencil um, in combination with the patterns that are on the paper that I'm going to be using today I think it they complement each other for sure and so you just see me swiping some of that acrylic gel medium through that stencil I'm trying not to get it too thick because it does take a little bit of time to dry and I kind of wanted to create um, kind of like skinny area at the top getting wider in the center and then a skinnier area at the bottom kind of like a big diamond shape almost uh, with my acrylic gel medium through that stencil and I'm going to just use that as some texture on my layout and that's also going to be a base for my art crayon and the art crayon is going to just kind of work its way around uh, this beautiful acrylic medium so that's all dried now and I've actually run that through my royal laminator just to flatten the paper out I didn't treat this foundations paper with any gesso the foundations paper is super thick and it takes lots of moisture you don't really have to worry about uh, putting too much gesso on there uh, unless you're really going to go crazy with the water uh, which I wasn't going to do today I added a fair bit of water but like um, not a ton so I wasn't too worried about uh, putting that gesso on there now you can see those two colors mixed together with the black just creates this really beautiful deep blue and it's perfect for what I wanted here today so I'm going to start off here just by splattering some of it on and then I'm going to take my distress sprayer and I'm going to spray that with some water just to kind of get that moving around so at this point I didn't want too much pigment on there I'm going to try to layer the pigment so that it'll dry and layer on top of uh, the next layer so to speak and it'll just um, in that way uh, slowly create some really interesting pattern on my paper now I'm just picking up a little bit of the pigment with some plastic this is some really thin plastic packaging and I'm going to you can just see here I'm creating that uh, skinny on the top and bottom and wide in the center pattern that I was talking about earlier 
So you can just see how that's layering, layering on top of that texture from the stencil. And I'm going to just let that run so that it has kind of like a little bit more of an organic look to it. And then I'll just continue to add more pigment and more water. I'll dry it a little bit with my heat tool in between layers. But here you can just see how that pattern paper looks so pretty with that color of blue. I think it's beautiful. And the really nice thing about Vicky's Art Crayons is you can just mix the colors and create your own color, whatever you might want. Um, you have enough art crayons with the different sets that you can definitely mix them together and create your own color that you might want if the exact color that you you're looking for isn't in one specific crayon so you'll just see me splattering some color on here I'll just continue to pick up more of that pigment with that plastic sheet I'll use my paintbrush to splatter and so on it's just the same process um, over and over again and I'm just gonna you know sometimes I'll just dry it in between and I, I don't think I do this on camera just because um, it's kind of boring watching people dry their their um, paint right or ink or whatever you're using but um, I just felt like you probably didn't want to watch me drying things so I do dry in between my layers here a little bit and a layer on top and so yeah it's just coming along I love like I said before I really love this color and definitely was able to make that navy just by adding that little bit bit of that black crayon in and this is just the perfect color of blue that I was looking for to go along with this pattern paper and some of the the deeper navy blues that I was looking for here on my project so I'm just going to go ahead and continue to splatter away. I'm just shielding with my hand there so that it doesn't splatter all over my desk. I find that's quite helpful. And uh, yeah, so I like how this is looking. I don't know if you've tried the acrylic gel medium before, but it is a really fun medium to work with. And it does dry matte. And so you can just see here, I'm just showing you the different patterns that are coming with the... Um, the uh, crayon and the combination of that texture. I'm just wanting to put a little bit more pig pigment in that area there to kind of going out towards the center a little bit. And the nice thing about working with this plastic sheeting here as well as you have a little bit more control um, as well where you're going to put that um, color. Just doing a little bit more splattering. This is such a fun process. This is one of the, the best things I think about working with mixed media is just, just playing, right? And seeing what you can create, seeing what you can come up with. And, you know, um, the wonderful thing about the stencils is you can do some really fun things and create something really unique and interesting with the combination with the different um, mediums for sure through the stencil. Now I'm just going to water my crayon down there again that I have on my plastic sheeting. Just going to let that collect together and now I'm just going to lift that up and I'm going to let that go ahead and just drip onto my paper. And that creates just some really nice large drops. And actually, if you just let this dry, those drops will dry quite dark. And here you can see this is all dry now and I'm ready to kind of start doing my next step. So I want to take my patchwork paper here and I want to run it through my trimmer and just cut some of those squares that I was talking about that I wanted to use this paper for. So you'll just see here, I'm going to um, go ahead and just line this up, make sure that it's all lined up properly on my trimmer so that I can get this cut on the lines, the spaces in between the tiles. I don't want to actually cut through the, the tiles themselves. And you can see that these tiles are all just lined up nicely. I love this paper. It is genius. It is absolutely perfection. Um, it's kind of got that little bit of distress look to it. Um, it's very interesting and varied and I love this so much I could have 100 sheets of this love it it's gorgeous it's actually it reminds me a lot of decor and a lot of the tile that's really popular right now in home decor um, so pretty and so I really wanted to use this on an angle right so that it's like that diamond shape and I wasn't really sure at this point where I wanted the placement of these shapes to be, but I knew that I wanted them to work 
uh, in tandem with that mixed media that I have on my paper at this point. So I'm going to uh, work with three different squares or diamond shapes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out a couple more. And I'm just kind of looking at the paper and trying to decide where I want to cut so that I can use my paper to its maximum. <laughs> I don't want to waste it in other words. So I am going to also use this paper um, down the side of my layout as well. Here in a little bit you'll see that. So I'm going to use a lot of this paper up but it's going to be sort of like in different parts and um, yeah so I'm just going to cut those other two squares here. I probably should have sped my video up here a little bit. Sorry about that. It's kind of slow and pokey, but it's just going to take me a couple seconds more here. And I'm going to cut out those other two squares. I love the color combination in this paper too. You get uh, a lot of the different colors that are in the Storyteller collection. So there's a little, you know, you can see the burgundy tones and some of the deep gold yellow tones. Um, so pretty. This collection is so stunning. It's, um, it really is... <laughs> It's so good and I just am having a lot of fun working with it. So here you can see the little photo that I'm going to be working with today and it's just a little square photograph. It's black and white and it's just these two sweet little kids here. This is a little boy and girl brother and sister and I'll tell you a little bit about this photo. Um, it's actually a student of mine that I taught like many, many years ago in probably about the middle of my teaching career. I had a group of students that I taught in grade eight. And then when they moved up to grade nine, I moved up to grade nine because one of my colleagues retired and I took his spot. And so those kids ended up having me as a teacher, a lot of them for two years. I taught them English and French. And she's one of the, the mom of these two little kids is one of those students. Students. And we've kept in touch off and on over the years. And she posted this picture on Facebook of these two little munchkins. And I asked her if I could scrap it. And she said, yes, absolutely. So I was thrilled. So I am making this layout for her, actually. So you can see here, I'm backing my photo with a little bit of tissue paper. And I'm going to uh, just adhere those layers of tissue paper down. And I'm also going to use some of the 8x6 pattern paper from the 8x6 paper pad, which is a beautiful collection of papers in a small on a small pattern scale. And this black paper is one of those. And I really wanted to use this as a neutral paper in my photo mount. So you'll just see me uh, tearing it, uh, cutting it, and distressing it. I've already distressed the edges of my little photo. And I just want to create a really distressed photo mat for this picture here. Now this picture is, I think it's 2.5 by 2.5. I did print it, like I said, in black and white. And I did put it through Lightroom. I've um, increased the exposure. I dehazed it, desaturated it. I wanted it to be really light and airy. And uh, I just love that picture. Oh my gosh, when I saw it on Instagram, um, I, I asked uh, my friend if I could, like I said, if I could use it. And she said, for sure. I mean, how cute is this photo? These two little munchkins are just absolutely adorable. So uh, yeah, I just really like how this all turned out. Now I'm thinking about maybe bringing a little bit of yellow in, but I'm looking at the pattern papers in the tile paper on that patchwork paper. And I'm thinking the, what, the pieces I chose don't really have a lot of yellow in them. So I'm thinking I'm going to go back to the back side of the patchwork paper and use this uh, scrap here, this which is going to be the navy side or the B side of that paper. And I'm going to just trim out a little bit and just leave it off uh, two sides of the mat. And I'm just going to rough up those edges with my distressing tool here. And each of these layers is going to have a little bit of foam adhesive between them so that, um, yeah, they're just, you have some, you know, a way to do a little bit of layering if you want between them, but it just adds a whole bunch of dimension, right, to the layout and to the photo in particular. So this burgundy paper, oh my gosh, you guys, it's so good. It's so pretty. Also from the 8x6 paper pad and I love it. It is so gorgeous. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a chunk of that and I'm going to distress that as well and it's going to stick out on the other side opposite that navy paper and just creating those layers in my photo mat just to add that detail and dimension and interest to the photo mat layers. Loving how that's looking 
And like I said, I will put foam adhesive between each of those different layers with a little bit of craft foam. And then I will just um, put some adhesive obviously between those layers and they'll be good to go. Now I'm looking at this and I'm going to use the manufacturer strip from this patchwork paper, but I'm also going to tear off a chunk of this um, with the navy side up. And I'm going to use that along the left edge of my layout here. Here you can just see I'm going to tear a little bit of that off, but I want to leave a little bit of excess on there because I'm going to fold it back on itself and kind of roll it a little bit and just make it look really interesting and, and textured on that side. So here you can just see, I'm just going to roll it and fold it. And it's interesting because when I put it down on the paper, it almost looks like there's another paper behind the navy when this is rolled up like that. And I also love that it reveals that patchwork pattern. And so it just brings your eye back over there and your eye is just sort of like pleased with that same pattern, right? That's on those little diamond shape uh, patchwork sections on the right side. So I really love that. Um, now these butterflies, oh my goodness, these dimensional butterflies from Storyteller. Mm. So good, love, love, love these. So I wanted to use three of these on this layout. I thought they were just like a really perfect soft combination with this photo and just it's kind of like a little bit unexpected with that patchwork tile pattern to have the butterflies too right so I just thought that was really interesting an interesting combination so I'm just going to kind of you know open the butterflies up a little bit so that their the, their little wings are fluttering up and nice and textured and lift off the layout in that way and here you can just see, I'm going to, I'm actually taking a little bit of tissue paper from my stash. This is some Tim Holtz um, tissue paper, which I love using on layouts like this. And I'm just going to rip a little bit off and I'm going to put it behind my photo as sort of like a final mat at the very back. And it, I think it just adds some really cool texture and interest to the photo mat layer in that way. So I'm going to get that stuck down and yeah, I like how that looks. I think that's neat and I'm gonna just kind of play around with what the placement of things at this point nothing's written in stone stone so to speak just yet um, I am going to commit to gluing down these tile pieces I actually took those down to my sewing machine and I did some stitching around the outside edge you can barely see it I don't know if you can see it on camera at all but it is there I also added some craft foam to the back so that these are popped up and a little more dimensional on the layout as well and now I'm just going to take my art uh, institute glue and I'm going to glue down those um, patchwork chunks to my layout here and I'm just going to take my little um, glass blocks here that are on my desk and those are just some paper weights. I like to use those when I'm adhering small pieces like this down to the mixed media. It, it is important to use some liquid adhesive on the the um, matte acrylic gel medium just because like it it's not easy for other things to adhere to that. So it's good to use a, some really strong adhesive. Now this chipboard banner piece, oh my gosh, you guys, this is so good. It's the same pattern as the patchwork paper. And so it works perfectly on this layout. And I just love how it kind of joins the photo over to the side. And I thought, oh, that's the perfect placement for the butter, one of the butterflies. So it kind of brings everything together, starts to create that visual triangle. And uh, I really like how that looks. Now, there's so many other bits to this uh, collection. Um, you know, the stickers and the chipboard and like all of the different, um, the sticker book, the cardstock stickers and whatnot. There's so many things to choose from. So I just started to kind of look through and see what I wanted to, what else I wanted to include on the layout. Now this is from the sticker book, this love piece, and I try it in three different places and you won't see till the very end of the, the layout here where I end up putting it. It does look good there. It looks fine right there, but I actually put it um, over to the left a little bit in its final position here. So I'm just looking at some of the other sticker book stickers. Um, oh my gosh, there are so many stickers on those sticker sheets. And I always have so much fun looking at those and seeing what I might like to include. So I took a little tab sticker in craft, which is just a nice neutral and put it up there with another little phrase sticker that I think that one says the best. 
And now you can see here, I moved that word love to the lower part, but I am going to move it. And I'm going to use three of these little chipboard black and gold heart uh, embellishments uh, in three different spots. So I'm going to put one by each one of the butterflies. So they're just little black circles with gold um, hearts on them, gold foil hearts. They're a perfect embellishment. I love those. And I'm going to get those stuck down. And um, I also decided I wanted to add a few more splatters and you're going to see me doing that here in a minute as well. So I'm taking my Vicky Booten Gold Glaze Medium. Love this stuff. It is fantastic. You can use this so many different ways. You can dry brush it. You can put it through a stencil wet. You can do what I'm doing here and water it down and splatter it onto your layout for some of that gold shine. I love how the tone of gold in that glaze matches perfectly with the gold tones that are in Storyteller. And I'm just going to go ahead and splatter that down. And I don't want it to be too wet. I'm actually not, at, I didn't add a ton of water to it because it's kind of then it's sort of almost like it's a little bit viscous and kind of chunky when it lands on your paper and it kind of adds even like a little bit of dimension. So I love that. And I'm going to move that word love. You're going to see that in the final transition and final look at the layout. But I also added some sewing to that navy blue paper over to the left side. So vertically all the way along that left navy blue torn paper is a line of stitching with my sewing machine as well. I really love that texture and how that just adds a little bit of extra. And you know what? That's going to be it. So you can see I popped the word love up on some foam adhesive. And here I'm just showing you the really pretty shine that that gold adds and all of the details. And I'm just going to leave a, a spot at the bottom where the mom of these two sweet little ones can add some journaling to this layout and this layout's finished and i had so much fun again with this vicky booten storyteller collection it is awesome thanks so much for stopping by i will leave a link in the description box below to everything that i used in this project today have an amazing day guys i'll see you next time here next week for another project for vicky booten design team Bye bye